This is the stator of my PCB motor design, and it's made only from 3D printed parts and printed circuit boards. I'm on a mission to make this work up to 5000 RPM. I think it's possible, but there has definitely been some challenges. Few weeks ago, I started building this absolute position encoder, which is capable of telling the precise angular position of a rotary actuator. This is when I realized that it could be nice to create a matching mostly 3D printed motor, which goes with the encoder design. Having an entire actuator built from easy to obtain mechanical parts, which are able to move precisely, is kind of unique. And this is where this project will be going. In this video, we will therefore take a look at the mechanical and electrical assembly of the PCB motor and discuss the current challenges and possible solutions. First, let's take a look at the fabrication of the mechanical parts. All structural parts are 3D printed and use M1.6 heatset inserts. These are the same I used for the encoder design to keep the bill of material smaller. They are then assembled into the 3D printed parts by application of heat. We need to insert the bearing into the 3D printed part, as well as gluing the magnets to the 3D printed rotor. Since the windings of the PCB motor tend to run a bit on the hotter side, I decided to print all parts from ABS to prevent warping due to heat. The main components of this motor are the electrical parts. Here I decided to go for a two-layer design with four pole pairs. This leads to a total of 12 coils wedged into a circular PCB. Taking a closer look at the coil shape, we realize that it winds from the outside to the inside, then switches layers and goes back from the in to the outside. This is necessary to keep the current continuously flowing in the same direction and adding up to a stronger total magnetic field. To get a larger force acting on the rotor's magnets, it is important to get the PCB as thin as possible. I therefore selected 1mm thickness, since this is the thinnest PCB you can still order on PCBWay within their $5 for 5 pieces prototype service. Let's actually use this moment to shout out PCBWay, who gracefully supported this video by sending over the boards used in this project at zero charge. Through their fast turnaround times and high quality boards, I was able to get this project from concept to physical design in no time. The high quality of manufacturing actually makes a huge difference here, since ideally all three motor faces should have the same face resistance, which is largely influenced by copper thickness and trace width tolerances. Each layer of the coils in this project has a total trace length of 704 mm. This theoretically results in a phase resistance of 2.28 ohms, based on a track width of 0.15 mm and a copper thickness of 35 micrometers. When measuring the resistance of two series motor phases, we get pretty close to the value of 16 times the individual layer resistance. Since we now obtained this real-life circuit board from PCBWay, we can start with the assembly process. For the PCB, there is not much more to do than soldering the motor faces to the electronic speed controller. As soon as this basic prototype assembly is finished, the next step is tuning the ESC software to match the motor parameters. For this, I used the application studio that comes with the STM32G4 based ESC discovery kit. It uses current measurements to estimate the phase resistance as well as spin-ups to estimate inductance as well as the voltage to speed constant. Here we start to see where the hardest part of this project will evolve. Developing an electronic speed controller and the matching software to drive a PCB motor at low RPMs. The software of this discovery kit currently attempts to run the motor in sensorless field-oriented control mode. This is nice for motors with iron stator cores but does not work so well for air core status. I will therefore attempt to develop a sensored field-oriented control algorithm in the future, which uses the same hardware, but additionally reads a feedback of the PCB-based absolute position encoder. This way, we can ditch the sensorless estimation of position and spin the motor closed loop from zero to 5,000 RPM. If you discovered any design flaws whilst watching this video, or have suggestions on how to improve the performance of the current design, 
don't hesitate to discuss them in the comments. And if you missed the update video on the Absolute Position Encoder, go and check it out on my channel.